Next week, currency traders will be on the edge of their seats as the Bank of England, the Reserve Bank of Australia, and the Swedish Riksbank reveal their next rate move. The countries and their currencies couldn't be more different. From the debt-pummeled pound to the risk-on Swedish krona to the commodity currency Aussie dollar. But fear not, breaking down the only trade you need to play all three is Andy Bush on the money. All right, and doing that at the Plasma is, in fact, the one and only Andy Bush. Andy. All right. Well, hopefully this next week we'll get back to some of the fundamentals that are in the market instead of DSK and sex scandals and, of course, Greece. So what we want to start with, of course, is central banks. Um, and we've got a, a slew of meetings next week. Here are three that are interesting, um, and I want to go through them. I, I, we're talking about Australia, Sweden, and the U.K. And just for fun, let's put up what their GDPs were in the first quarter so we can uh, take a look at that real quick. Um, as you can see, it's Australia actually was negative 1.2 percent. Sweden was up 0.8 and the UK was up a half. So with that, let's take a look at each one of these meetings. So in Australia, they're meeting on the 5th, and they're looking uh, to raise, they're looking to keep interest rates unchanged at 4.75%. You know, why? They're concerned about what was going on with Europe, but also the high level of the Australian dollar. They stated at their last meeting that this is one of the reasons why they didn't want to move. It's one of the reasons why interest rates backed off in Australia, and the Australian dollar fell. Now it's risen back up. Now they have to meet. It's unlikely they're going to change rates, market expectations for them to stay unchanged. Let's move to Sweden. Sweden is rocking and rolling. They've got very strong growth, as we mentioned, 0.8 percent. This is one of the groups that's going to raise interest rates. So the market's expecting 25 basis points up to 2 percent. Both Australia and Sweden have raised interest rates since the financial crisis, about 175 basis points. We're expecting another two rate hikes out of Sweden going forward. And finally, with the U.K., this is a country that's experienced some pretty slow growth this year. Um, this central bank is meeting on Wednesday and Thursday with the rate decision on Thursday. Um, but they, oh, their, their rate of growth in the first quarter was, was half a percent, but it was negative in the fourth quarter. So it really tells us nothing. They've had slower growth over the last couple of months. And that's really what's getting people concerned as their austerity measures are starting to bite in. And they're going to keep interest rates unchanged. So out of this, I'm looking at trying to take advantage of the market's expectations for additional um, uh, hikes, but not really out of Australia. This is the, how I want to play this. I know this sounds a little crazy, but what I want to do is I want to sell sterling and I want to buy Aussie. And I want to do this trade uh, around current levels, which is about 150 and a quarter. Um, from that, I want to leave a stop loss at about 152 and a quarter. And I'm looking for a fairly big move down to 140 and a quarter. The reason why I'm looking at such a big parameter is because the last time we dropped out of the bottom of a range that we've been in with um, uh, sterling wise, it had that type of a move. So that's what I'm looking for. I think Australia is going to pick up some uh, momentum on the upside, not necessarily because of the interest rates, but because I think they're going to start seeing stronger growth going forward. So again, this is a risk on play. That's what I want to follow through from what we did with Canada. All He's right. a risk on kind of guy. Yes. Yeah. And I have to jump in here, Andy. I, I, <laughs> I like the trade. Obviously, I like selling sterling. I was doing against Euro instead of Aussie, but I think this makes sense. You know, we've seen in the last week or so better data out of Japan, leading indicators and coincident. Japan reconstruction, they need commodities. Where are they right. getting it? Some from Australia. Chinese soft landing, no hard landing, strong growth. Where are they getting their commodities? Australia. And when you look at what the market's expecting right now, it's still giving a small probability that Australia cuts interest rates before the end of this year, which ain't going to happen. What about the, a little bit of the disappointing data that we got, though, out of China over well, the last but year, again, it, hours? Agreed. It's disappointing, but it's not disappointing hard landing China crash. Right. It's moderating growth, which, frankly, is what we want to see. We've all been worried about too high inflation. It's either too hot or too cold. China's just right. Yeah, but you, you know what? I want to jump in there because what, what I've seen, for, the, for instance, for the U.S. economy, right, we've had the headwinds of the supply chain disruption, right? We know that's abating. I kind of talked it with Joe, right? The second thing we know is that gasoline prices are lower. That's helpful to, to the consumer. And finally, we also know for the fourth, third and fourth quarter, we're going to get this 100% expensing uh, deal for capital expenditures in the United States. All of that should boost growth going forward. The first two will boost it right away. I like getting the risk on trade back on um, S&P, you know, 1250, 1350. Yes, 
we see some momentum there. So I, I like this going forward for summer. Uh, and hopefully this is a nice little period of time between the Greece debacle and potentially the U.S. debacle going forward. Or potentially, potentially the next debacle over right, here. Right, exactly. Yes. All right, the bottom line, just to recap here, Andy is selling sterling versus the Australian dollar ahead of next week's slate of central bank meetings and your first chance to make that very trade Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. All right, up next, why could this chart mean money in your pocket? Todd Gordon standing by at the money map. He's going to explain, so don't go anywhere because more money in motion is coming right back after this.